What is up, guys? Welcome back to another awesome episode of Railroads Online. Here at the Ramblin' Railroad, we are going to be running some trains today. I just used Ultra, and I put together this 100 series train. I did buy six more of these for a total of 12. There's our 112 right there. That counts down. That's just the way it put them on the uh, purchasing lane over there, and I just gathered them up using Ultra. For those of you who don't know, Ultra is my switching engine here at the Freight Depot. It's our first engine that we started with. And he was called Ultra because he was ultra strong. It is the second porter. Uh, let me show you. This one, the Porter Tier 2. So I got him put back away over there in his house, number one. And today we need to come up with a locomotive to pull this log car train. We do need to refill the sawmill. So let's buy a new locomotive. And after doing some thinking and some money research, uh, I think we're going to go with the Cook Mogul. I was thinking about getting another Class 70 and just having a whole fleet of Class 70s, but I want to experience all of the locomotives at some point. So we're going to go ahead and buy this guy right here. Nice, $4,300. I think we have enough. Let's check our funds really quick. Whoa. We got $7,500. So we got plenty of money. And that's after buying all those cars. So this is our third locomotive, number three. The name is going to be... Uh, I kind of hinted at this when we were doing all the testing. I kind of like the name Maverick. It's a good old timey, you know, old west name. And the tender is going to be It looks like I can't seem to move here. There we go. Uh it's hanging off. I misspelled it too really bad. Well, it's I was watching it while I was typing, so let's just go rambling railroad, kind of like that. There we go. Number three. What else we got here? Let's uh, check out the smokestack. You know, I kind of like that one. That looks kind of neat. But I also like just the straight pipe. We'll be different. We'll get a we, the beast has got that straight pipe, so this one here will have that big old funnel, and that's actually designed to catch embers and whatnot, so that's kind of neat. Oh, yeah, we're definitely getting the second one. I like the added detail on the brackets, it looks like there is a like a placard or something up here. Yeah, we'll get the second one. All right, so we'll go ahead and order that. There it is, and we'll get it fired up here and hooked up to the tender. That's gonna take a little bit. While it's warming up, Let's take a look really quick at the mini map tool. I did hear back from several of you talking about the mini map tool and how you think it's a wonderful addition to the game and how I should continue to use it. I couldn't agree more. However, we do need to set some rules because there is some ways to cheat in here. So of course we're going to be using it to move around uh, the locomotive. I'll be using it to set brakes when we have the train hooked up to it and that sort of thing. I will use it to set the switches, especially in the rail yards. I will use it to teleport 
but I'm not going to use it to teleport just to teleport. There's got to be a reason. I'm thinking that that reason should be to come back to a location to do switching duties. As I said, we do have Ultra here, and he will handle all the switching for this place. And we have our new switching yard here at the smelter, which we still need to purchase a locomotive for this switch yard. So when we come down with like Beast or we come down with Maverick to drop a load off, we're actually not going to come straight into the smelter if it's like a mixed load or something like that. We're going to be coming in more in here and I've decided that this is going to be the inbound rail, rail yard section and this will be the outbound. So we'll bring in trains from like the coal mine that's going to have a mixed load of all sorts of things on it I'm guessing. We'll unhook it, swing around here where there'll be a train ready to head to a des destination. We'll hook up to it and then just boogie on out whichever way we need to go. That is, of course, if it needs it. If we're running this train here, for example, that is not necessarily a mixed train except for the, the iron ore, it makes more sense to do what we've been doing to come in here and just offload those two cars really quick on our way back up to the sawmill. So it's going to be mission dependent, but if we did need to come over here and do switching duties, we could use this tool to teleport. However, things we will not use this tool for. Anything in this menu. I'm not going to be flying. I'm not going to be sprinting really fast. I'm certainly not going to cheat in more money. And I'm not going to do anything with the XP. Again, the XP really doesn't mean anything in this game anyway. Maybe when you're first starting out, it means something. Uh, you can't buy like the, the class 70 or something until you build some rail. So anything in this menu, we're not going to be using it for. And that's really all there is to this map that I have found anyway. So I'll use it to move the locomotive around. I'll use it to move some switches around where it needs to, especially during uh, rail yard duties. I think that'll be much more efficient and I will use it to teleport when I need to. The other thing about this really quick is, oh, I clicked off a, a different menu I had on my other screen. The other thing really quick is how this works. So what I just did, I just minimized the game and I came back into it, but I had to go over to my screen recording software and I actually turned off the display capture and I turned back on the game capture. Now I know you probably don't know exactly what I'm just talking about. Basically the way it works is now it's just looking at the game and nothing else. So if I push the F1 key to bring up the minimap tool, I see it and you don't. So you can't even see my mouse moving around, but I can actually flip switches. Let me uh, show you what I'm talking about really quick. We'll come over here to this switch. The reason why I need to do this is because it's takes up a lot less space and uh, it acts as a performance thing. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this switch that you're staring at right there. Uh, you didn't see the mini map tool, but you saw the flip the switch flip. So again, the reason why is because it's a performance thing. It's a, a file size thing. If I do my whole screen capture, it taxes my computer more while I'm playing the game than it does just the game capture, and it makes this, the file sizes much larger. So you won't see the tool is what I'm saying. You might see the, the results of the tool or while I'm using the tool. If I come up here, I got the minimap tool open again, and I teleport, that's what it's going to look like. But again, I'm going to try and limit how much of that you actually see through the magic of editing. So we'll just leave it at that. I just realized that I messed up rambling RRD. Should just be RR. Oh well. Railroad.
<laughs> it fits. At this point, it's not worth restarting the game. There we go. About time. It took a lot of water. Lift that up. Continues to boil over. That took two, almost a, a hundred units of water to fill that tender and the boiler pretty much at the same time. Of course, I left the air compressor on full. Let's go get hooked up to this train over here. Take a look at this. They do such a good job of modeling on these locomotives. I just gotta stop and admire it just really quick. Like, you can almost make out the writing. You can make out the writing on this air compressor. That is so cool. Just works of art. Okay. Let's get up to the logging camp and get that sawmill full. <laughs> All right, and while we're pulling out of the freight depot here, Let's talk about the updates that just occurred, because we do actually have a couple updates. They finally pushed beta to the main game, and they released all of the uh, changelog notes, all the release notes, with that big push. But they kind of snuck something in there uh, that wasn't part of the beta update, at least not that I'm aware of. And that is... They increased the refinery output, 12T crude oil, I'm guessing that's tons, plus 2 tons lumber, plus 1 ton steel pipe equals 10 barrels of oil. One oil barrel is one barrel of heavy oil. 100% crude oil yields about 11% heavy oil. Adjust the economy output. If one product storage is full, production for the second product will double. They added difficulty settings for industries, easy, input times one, output times two. Medium, input times one, output times one. And the one that I selected during the login game setup was hard, input times two, output times one. So we're gonna be putting in one, and I did a little more login in there it looks like. We're gonna be putting in one, or, or two to get one. I think that's how that means. So we're just kind of cruising along here. I could have bumped it up. There we go. So we're going to be using Maverick more for this flat track kind of duty. Between the logging camp. It... I don't know, I haven't done the math on it. It can't pull very much weight, not especially compared to the Class 70. Class 70 is one of the best locomotives in the game. But it can do some pretty heavy loads on 0% or maybe 1 or 2%. So, and we're going to be pulling this 3% unloaded. So it should do just fine, and we'll use it to run between like the oil field and the uh, all those industries down there. Maybe run cordwood down to the smelter. We'll see. So we'll get up here to the logging camp. And we'll get this filled up and taken over to the sawmill. Or 50% reg, and it really pulled it down. Pulling this little bit of a hill unloaded. I did it okay, I guess. We're 
we're not quite there yet, but... I could give it some more power. Just want to see how it'll do first. I think it's going to work just fine for us. In fact, we probably need to slow down a little bit. You can see them starting to tip on that curve. Really need to come in here and do some work. Clean up this... Uh, this track. for that caboose to come around. There we go. So cool, so open in here. I really do like it. Something different, you know? I can tell you it is tiring doing nothing but logging. I've been just trying to pick away at it, as you saw when we went, went by it over there. That's where the line's gonna go. I'm actually gonna put a rail yard in there, I'm thinking. May not have a switching engine there, but just something you can pull a a train off, disconnect your last couple cars or something like that, and go on down the line. Maybe. We'll see. That's a ways off in the future. Alright, we'll get loaded up here. And we'll get on down to the sawmill. Alright, that should be the last one. There we go. This is a big train, and I did run into a slight issue. I actually had to set the brake, the handbrake on the caboose, because the locomotive brake actually wasn't strong enough to hold back this train once it got moving down that little bit of a hill there. Setting this brake really helped. Let's see if what happens if we turn it off. We're gonna start sliding. It was when I was moving, I couldn't actually stop. I had to try and back up. So, we might have to come up this way. Have the locomotive facing that way. While we get loaded with logs here. Let's jump back in the locomotive here and uh, head on down to the sawmill. This is 72 logs on board. We got 12 of these 100 series cars each car holds six logs and that's 72 by my math my math is really bad so you might want to fact check me on that that means we probably just need two maybe one load we'll see when we get there i don't know how much product we have i know the pond is empty all right let's go reverse or forward break off i'm not going to give it any regulator as a matter of fact we don't have any fuel so we should probably fuel this thing up really fast I'm not going to risk it. We're going to... <laughs> uh, we got to set a little bit of break here. I don't want that last couple of cars to come whipping around this corner. Already picking up quite a bit of speed. We'll go break off. Give some regulator. I did run the calculations for this. I can go up about a 2% grade with this load. It's more like uh, 175, but it could actually do it. So on flat ground here, this is nothing. I don't know what this is. I don't remember if this climbs at all. It might. If it does, it's not for very long and it's not very steep. Alright, I got full brake. We gotta slow way down. Wanted to kinda of do that rolling offload thing. In fact, let me jump out really quick. Oop. Start doing that. It's 
probably too much break. Oh no, I'm getting pummeled. Yeah, we've come, we've come to a stop. I left the brake on. Alright, we'll go break off. Just get it moving a little bit. We can jump out. Gotta move a little faster now. Come on now. Alright, that's so far we got 56 logs in the pond. And it's more than likely pulling them out still. Yeah, 54 now. Let's run across, well, swim across over here and see how much product we actually have. Now, I do know that it's on set to hard. So we got that uh, two in and one out setting. We got 28 lumber so far. and 83 beams. So we'll make another run and try and fill this thing up. Everything, all the industries seem to take some type of wood product. So this is gonna be probably one of the most productive, if not the most productive industry we have in the entire game. We gotta keep it fed and that's Maverick's job now. All right, we're pulling up here. Full break right there. Whistle. Let them know the parking brake is set. And we'll start loading more logs. That should be the last one here. This is much easier with the whole train up on flat level ground. All right. Wow. It's kind of a cool picture. All right, we'll jump in Maverick here. We'll go around this loop. All the switches are set. Go break off. Ease it around this loop. Oh, I didn't whistle. I think that's the correct whistle. One for stop, two for go, three for backing up, and four for crossing. Well, it's uh, two longs, one short, one long for crossing. I don't remember. It's been a long time. Let's open it up. Break off 100% reg. Let's see what it can do. there's a little bit more smoke effect that's a very clean fire for a wood fire especially <laughs> Be cool to see a little bit more chuffing action and, and that sort of thing heck yes we're doing great
See how many we had. Zero. This uh, two to one, two inputs, one output. We might be shooting ourselves in the foot. We might be making this a lot more difficult for no real reason. I don't think it's very fair. We might go to the one to one. We just put 72 logs now. Uh, was that 144 logs? Is that how that math works? End of this thing. Let's see how many is that now? 62. We'll see how much we have on the output side. Seventy six on the output side. We'll fill it on the next run. Got a hundred beams. So it should continue to produce if I read that right. Yeah. Whereas before it would stop. If that with one was at a hundred, the other side would stop, but now it's being doubled. So we're not going to make another run. What we're going to do is head back to the freight depot because we do have something else to do tonight that I would like to get done. So we'll see you back at the freight depot. Yeah, so let me know what you guys think. Uh, do you think we should continue doing the hard industries? Uh, two to one? Or do you think we should uh, go back to doing medium? I believe medium is where it's been. And that was pretty challenging. You know, it's a it's a lot of runs to fill something up. I'm thinking, you know, like uh, filling up the, the smelter or, uh, for that fact, even the iron ore mine. Putting in a lot of products and not getting a lot out. As it is, those are really long runs. I'm thinking maybe we should go back to medium. I'm just not a big fan of doing things the easy way. I like to do things the hard way, it seems like. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Alright, I think we're going to put this train down the first rail lane here. Get him out of the way. Not sure the next time we're going to be running logs. Then we'll take Maverick and put him in his house. Number three. I'll back it onto the turntable here. Maybe not so fast. <laughs> All right, ease it on there. This one gonna fit. Bring that last. Oh, now we got a few more feet. We could probably go. Just gonna go break off. See if it rolls on its own. Get that front truck up on there. There we go. Now it looks like we're on. This one fits the snug fit, but it fits a lot better than Beast did. Okay, now it's got to rotate it on around. This thing you push on it just a little bit, and sometimes it, it'll move a little bit. And other times it'll just kind of take off on its own. And of course when it does that, you don't need it to and it'll overshoot your track. Okay, we're coming up on it. It's right in that area. I can't really see it. A little bit further it looks like. I don't think this one's been tested yet. Since I built this... 
roundhouse here. That'll probably do it. But I'm going to give it... I'm not going to look. I'm just going to give it just a little bit more. Like that. And then get in it and go. So we'll go... Break off. Reverse her back just a little bit. Let's get it sliding. Down this little bit of a hill. So far so good. A little more. Wow. Barely fits. Alright. <laughs> there we go. Doesn't quite line up with the funnel. That's alright. Alright. We got Maverick in his house. We got Ultra in his house. And he just kind of went way far back. What we need to do now is check out how much money we have. $4,480. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I would like to buy another locomotive. Let's see, what are our options here for locomotives? We got this one. Again, I do not like this one. I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it... I know it got nerfed big time. Uh, but if I'm going to buy a switching locomotive, it's going to be the Tier 2. Porter. I'm thinking about the Eureka. But we just bought Maverick. And that's Maverick's going to be our flat locomotive for a while. Eventually, I'll buy... A, by Eureka, just to have it in my collection. I'm thinking... Hmm. We can buy them all. I didn't see anything that was over... Well, can't buy the Heisler. Can't buy the Climax. Buy the Eureka. I'm gonna go ahead and buy this one. Because we need a switching locomotive down at the smelter station. This is going to be locomotive number four for the Ramblin' Railroad. The name. Uh, let's do Ramblin' Railroad for the tender. Even though it doesn't have a tender. It's curious. Where's Where did it put that? I guess it didn't put that. That's fine. So let's see the name. So I'm thinking we have Ultra. And I named it Ultra... Because it was ultra strong. And these little switching locomotives are pretty stout. They're pretty, pretty strong, tough little locomotives. So I just said some good names there. What if we went tough or stout? I'm thinking I like stout. Let's just go with stout. Can't change the smokestack, change the headlight. I mean, at headlights. Oh, we need headlights. Uh, who knows if they're ever going to come out with daytime or uh, nighttime. So, we definitely want headlights. Let's go ahead and order that. Bam, there's Stout. Let's go ahead and get it fired up here. Get some water in the boiler as soon as we can move it. And then we're going to take it on down to the smelter. All right, we got full pressure. Let's go reverse her forward, break off, start moving. We got uh, plenty of water in the boiler too at, at uh, 500, there it is. This one spawned in full of water, so that's helpful. So we're just gonna boogie on down to the smelter where it's going to be used to 
break apart and put together trains for the smelter station. Alright, here we are coming into the smelter station. This is going to be Stout's new home. That was a very long trip to get down here. It, uh... I don't know if it's just a size thing or, or what. I don't know if they're all the locomotives actually go to the same speed or if there's subtle differences, but that just seemed to take forever. Noisy and... Ugh. <laughs> Alright, so we're just gonna put them on this turntable. And we'll get them parked in his house. This is a pretty sharp turn, so we are going to take it easy, even though Stout shouldn't have any problems with it. I don't want to risk a derailment. You'll notice, too, I did move the water tower a little bit closer to the fueling station. And I figure that the bigger locomotives can get to that point. So if they're taking on water, they can be taking on firewood as well. Whoa! We gotta stop! 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 Oh, no! <laughs> it wouldn't be an episode without a derailment, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, let's get this guy back on the, on the rails here. <laughs> ah, figures. <laughs> what I get for paying attention, not paying attention. There it goes. It's just going on its own now. So that's super helpful. Push it back the other way. I wanted the house right in front, so I didn't have to mess with the turntable too much. But it wouldn't fit. If I put it out in front here, you know, you need to have some space for the kind of the, the Y here. So it would be like in this area, but the the back of it hit those tracks. So let's we'll put them in number one here. You'll notice, too, I did put it up on some groundwork. Did a little bit of a foundation thing. Kind of like what I did up at the iron ore mine. Only this time I was able to get it closer. I don't know why I struggled so hard with that before. That's what it is. Alright, we'll go break off. Reverse forward. Ease on to it. It's a big gap, but it handles it just fine. Go ahead and break. And then we'll push this thing on around the other way. All right. Do break off, reverse her back, give it a little bit of regulator. And just slide it on in there. Way too far forward, but that's all right. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please leave, if you have a question for the Q&A show coming up pretty soon, I announced in the last episode, please drop it below and try to do that, uh, question colon thing. That way I know it's a question you need answered or what would like answered on the Q&A show. And we're going to be running some good long trains uh, in real time doing that kind of like a live stream, but I can't do live stream. So that's how we're going to make up for it. So if you have a question, uh, anything in particular, go ahead and feel free to ask. i got a lot of questions already. Thank you so much for those questions, and I will definitely include them in that show, and we will answer them. And, but if you have any more, you know, let, uh, post, post them in the comments below. I do read all comments. If you like this episode, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. That really does help the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. That'll really help out, too. So, all right, well, we'll see you on the next one. The next episode, just so you guys know, we're going to try to get up to the coal mine. 
because we have a lot of materials here that we need to start moving. So we need to get up there. We need to bring materials up to the coal mine. We need to bring coal down, but we've got to get rid of these products here too. So, all right, well, that's going to do it again. Have a wonderful night.